Did you hear the news? I heard that Critter Junction got a fever and the only prescription is more services. Let's take a look at how we help Critter Junction turn their monolith into microservices. While much of Critter Junction's focus has been on redesigning existing systems to be more scalable, they also had to have a plan for new systems. They wanted to add a level editor feature, and instead of using C++ like the main game engine, they wanted to write it in a designer-friendly scripting language like Python. This led them to wonder if it would be a good idea to break out all of their core services into independent services, and if so, how should they go about it? When our team first took a look at Critter Junction's architecture, we told them the truth. Not everything needs to be a microservice. Microservice apps add complexity because how the independent services communicate can be non-obvious, and that communication happens over a network, so message passing and security can become a concern. Plus, just by better architecting your monolith to include monitoring, logging, CICD, and health checks, you can get a lot of the benefits of a microservice-based approach, like observability and recoverability. For their level editor feature, Critter Junction needed the ability to deploy services independently and for separate teams to write components in different languages. So for their needs, a microservice or service-oriented architecture gave them the most flexibility. We thought this would be pretty straightforward, but we ran into a problem. While some of their services didn't require state, some of the services clearly did, and some services were tightly coupled in a way that made it unclear if they actually required state or not. Ideally, you want your services to be stateless and not retain any local persistent data. This way, each request or interaction can be handled without needing to know what happened before. This approach makes it a lot easier to scale and recover your services because services can grow, shrink, or be restarted without losing any data. Luckily, before we started refactoring the system, we took the time to create a plan. The first step was to take an inventory of the entire system. We spent some time refactoring the monolith to decouple some of the components. While this was going on, the new level editor was designed and deployed as a microservice. This was great because it gave Critter Junction a preliminary test for the new approach where they could set up and test deploying services independently and make sure they could communicate with each other. Then we started migrating the monolith in stages. Instead of doing everything at once, we started with the stateless components like the UI. After the stateless components, we went on to migrate stateful services with independent data sets like their off service, which wasn't as easy. Finally, we migrated trickier features with shared data sets that we couldn't quite fully decouple, like their shopping cart feature. Over time, Critter Junction can work to re-architect these features, but for now, they have a functional and more easily maintainable microservice architecture. Transitioning from a monolith to microservice approach isn't always necessary, and it isn't always effortless, but in this case, it gave Critter Junction key business features they needed, so it was the right choice. So, that's a wrap for this episode of Season of Scale. Stay tuned to learn how Critter Junction continues to improve the design of their app architecture and dev processes. And remember, always be architected.